No, I was ready to give up on Italy, honestly. No, I'm just kidding. But on the men, yeah. the Italian men. We have been married for three months. Oh, but you yeah. seem so in love. I thought he was and, just... And, 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 well, I mean, it's already on the, in the process of declining, but... No, sure. <laughs> Amore. You can cut this. Uh, yeah. It was just one of those things. I met Tess years ago when we both first moved to Rome. She was a jazz singer, I was a writer and filmmaker. I could tell you we never thought we'd end up like this, both feeling more at home in Italy than in the US or Australia, both fluent in Italian, her married to a charming Roman, but that would be a lie. We both knew from the beginning Italy for us was less of a fling and more of a lifelong love affair. And she calls me up and she says, Tesoro, Giovanni and I want to head out of Rome for the weekend. Voi venire? Of course I want to come. And they invite another Italian friend who likes feasting and discovering secret little ruins as much as we do. And so we set off on a little culinary and cultural road trip in places so close to Rome, yet seldom explored by the masses. It was just one of those things. Basta un'ora che fretta c'era, maledetta primavera, che fretta c'era, maledetta. I was a, I was uh, organizing concerts with a group of friends because we love like to support young artists, and they told me you have to meet this young American singer. She's becoming so great. <laughs> and basically, that's how we started. We met, and uh, I listened to her music, and thought, well, actually, yes, she's so great. Aww. And I saw he wasn't wearing a ring, and so I was like. I'm going to marry that man. <laughs> I mean, you've been in Rome for how many years when you met Giovanni? Oh, six? Yeah, six years. I'd been six and a half years I'd been in Rome. No, I was ready to give up on Italy, honestly. No, I'm just kidding. But on the men, yeah. the Italian men, because it's very hard to find the perfect, uh, the perfect mix of Giovanni, everything. <laughs> There are so many people who think, ah, no, this is, uh, it's, it's not possible to, to move to Rome from, from America, fall in love and make a whole life here, no? Yeah, well, actually, that was sort of my, my great expectation. I quit my Wall Street job and moved over here without any friends or any job or any idea how I would support myself. And... Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to support myself doing what I love, which is singing and guiding. <laughs> so I got to use my major because I came to Rome for the first time in 2005 with Duke University to study classical civilization uh, and art history on site. Okay, but tell me Giovanni, because I know from living in Italy that sometimes you, they can, the Italians can see the, the straniera, you know, the, the foreign girl who comes off. And, and so, what was your first impression? Actually, when I met Tessa, I had this very positive feeling because I, I, I've never think like the idea of like 
uh, hooking up with the, with the, with the, the American tourists in Rome. And, and when I met her, I thought, well, she, she's perfectly Roman as, as, as much as I am. And she knows more about the ancient history of this town than I do. Well, that's why we decided to do these excursions for the weekend in Tusha, because I think that with all of the hype surrounding Tuscany and, of course, the amazing cities, Rome, Florence, Naples, people sort of don't realize that there's an amazing world to discover right outside of the Roman walls, right outside the Aurelian walls. Um, so this is what we're trying to encourage them to do because a lot of my clients write to me and say, oh, we're coming to Rome for two days and then we'd like to visit Florence and we were thinking in between to go to Tuscany and we want to show you the new Tuscany, the new Grand Tour, which is actually less than an hour from the center of Rome. Uh, there is a touristic Italy mm. that is wonderful. Uh, there is so much sightseeing, but it's kind of superficial. And what I really love, even after 39 years living here, is still discovering authentic Italy. You think it's possible? Yeah, I think it's yeah. possible. The like traditions of small villages, meeting people. How, how are also these countries changing? Because of course Italy is no more the 19th century farmers going around with their cows. Mm. But it's changing and keeps like in... A, I also like the idea of protecting the roots mm -hmm. of this country and the tradition. And, Another thing that makes Italy so special, I think, is this like lot local taste that you find everywhere. Mm. Like everywhere, there is like, I mean, you can say uh, cold cuts of meat, no, salami. It's not like that you want you try one salami in Italy. Every little town has its different salami, and everyone keeps the spirit of the town. And I think that's it. There, if there is a poetry in, in salami then you will find it in Italy. I think that if there is a poetry in salami, he's the only one who's ever theorized that notion. The days of wine and roses Laugh and run away Like a child that play Through the mandolin towards a closing in the